Hi everybody, I hope you're doing well today. Uh, today we're going to be doing a video on how to modify your knife and make it the way you want and personalize it a little bit. You'll see here what I did to my paramilitary 2. I rounded the spine. I did an acid etch on it, which looks great. And I added a sharpening choil right here so you could sharpen all the way up to the edge. I also did the pocket clip, the liner, um, added a backspacer, tied a knot or a lanyard and added a uh, bead on here and did all of the screws, all that stuff as well. And this one turned out great. So today we're going to be doing a very similar thing on the Spyderco Tenacious I have here today. Now I'm customizing this a little bit more for a trip I'm going on. I'm going to be going to Utah, so I am going to be rounding the spine on this. But I want a nice sharp 90 degree angle right here so that I can use a uh, flint or a, 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 a fire steel on this guy. Um, just give it a little bit more use. But I'm going to round everything else off. And you'll see this line right here. This is just to show me what I'm going to be putting nail polish over, how far in the pivot I'm going to be putting nail polish so that I don't mess that up when I do an acid etch on this guy. I'm also going to do some other things to the handle that I'll go over today uh, and add a sharpening choil to this guy. So just bear with me here and we'll get started, okay? All right, so just some of the things you're going to need to do some of these modifications uh, to your knife. Number one is going to be a good Dremel tool uh, with a similar bit to this guy right here, which is just a carbide bit. It's going to be good for cutting metal. Uh, we're going to need, obviously, our knife, so pick a knife of your choice to modify. We're also going to need some good sandpaper. I definitely recommend this stuff just because it comes with so many different grits. This stuff is great for metal. Uh, I do recommend using it wet, so we're going to use some uh, WD-40 as our lubricant uh, on the sandpaper while we're doing that. Uh, because this knife does have 90 degree angles, we don't want to wear down that sandpaper super quickly, so we're going to use a file just to take off that edge. Uh, right on there and we're also going to use some rat tail files with some different shapes just to get in some of those weird areas um, along with that dremel tool bit we're also going to use a stone bit just to kind of soften up the area after we're done so it kind of has a little bit more of a shine to it uh, to do the acid etch we're going to use some ferric chloride i'll link all this stuff in the description um, and then yeah so we'll get started all right, so the next thing I'm going to be doing to the knife here, as you can see, I've got it propped up. I'm going to be rounding the spine of the knife up until this black part right here. And I'm even going to be rounding this side, just not this side. So the black is just a little bit of Sharpie to tell me exactly what I'm going to be using my sandpaper on and what I'm not going to be using the sandpaper on. Uh, last time when I did the paramilitary, I did find it a little bit easier to uh, take the blade out, but... I don't think I'm gonna go as round as I did on the paramilitary. I think I'm just gonna knock the edge off because it is a little bit sharp. Okay, so let me prop the camera up and I'll get started showing you exactly what you gotta do to All do right, that. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do when you are rounding the spine of your knife is just take a small rat tail file just to knock off the edge or you're gonna lose a lot of that sandpaper and you're gonna end up going through it very fast. So I'm just going to carefully Knock down the edge. You're not actually going to be doing much with the file. You're just taking off that sharp edge so the sandpaper can do its work. All right, next what I'm going to do, I'm going to take some 500 grit sandpaper if you go any lower, you're just gonna kind of rub that uh, sandpaper right off of the paper, uh, which you do wanna avoid. Um, so I'm just gonna take some 500 grit, 500 grit sandpaper, cut it into like a four or five, six inch length, um, just so that you have a little bit of uh, room that way you can kind of do like a stropping on the back of the spine in some different angles. So you're gonna take some WD-40 or whatever lubricant you want on your sandpaper. Spray some of that on there. Don't be shy, you can put a little bit on there. And then you're just gonna start sanding it down. All 
Now you do want to be a little bit careful. This edge is still sharp. So you do want to definitely uh, be mindful of where your fingers are. If you want, you can actually tape up the edge. I've done this a couple times. Famous last words, I know, but we'll see what I can do here. As you can see here, I have rounded the spine to my liking. It's kind of hard to show on camera, but it's nice and rounded right up here. You see all the stuff that comes off. So I'm clearly removing material. And this edge right here is still at a 90 degree, which is what I want. But this side is just as rounded as this whole area, which is definitely nice. Um, next, I think what I'm gonna do, I might kind of chamfer the edge of the spidey hole a little bit, because. It's sharp enough, it removes nail material, and that kind of bothers me a little bit. Uh, and then we're on to uh, adding a, a sharpening choil. All right, so next we're on to adding, adding the sharpening choil, which just gives you a little bit more area to sharpen, gives you a little bit more ease of use when sharpening. Uh, we're gonna add it right down here, right at the edge. So let me lower the camera and we'll get started. I should also say that I am using one of these carbide bits uh, it's good for metal. You do want to make sure you keep the metal cool or you're actually going to take off the heat treat and the um, tempering that is done on the knife originally. So do you want to keep it cool? So we're going to do a couple passes and rinse it with some water. All right, and with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get started here. All right, so now we've gone and uh, thrown on one of these pink stone bits. Usually they're used for like sharpening, uh, but we're just gonna use it to take off any burrs that we left while we did that sharpening choil with the carbide bit. Alrighty, so at this point, uh, what we've done is we have rounded the spine, leaving that little bit of sharpened area for using uh, some fire steel, chamfered the inside of the spidey hole, and added that sharpening choil. Uh, so the next step, we are going to use the ferric chloride and give this an acid etch. I'm not going to do an acid stone wash. There are videos on how to do that. Uh, I'm just going to do the straight up acid etch. I'm also going to etch the liners and the... Um, pocket clip and some of the uh, pivot screws and all that stuff. All right, so the next step is going to be using the ferric chloride to acid etch the blade. Uh, like I said, we're not gonna be doing an acid stone wash, but we are just going to be etching it today. So to do this, you're gonna need some rubbing alcohol of any grade, some nail polish, your ferric chloride, and a container to hold your ferric chloride in. So right now what I'm doing, I'm just using that rubbing alcohol to clean off the blade. Make sure I got all of that Sharpie, everything off, or the nail polish and the ferric chloride won't have a easy time sticking. So once I feel like I've gotten everything off of this, I'm gonna go ahead and set it down to dry for a second. And now we're gonna figure out exactly where I need the nail polish to go so that I don't mess up the pivot, uh, so the blade still opens smoothly, and so I don't have to resharpen this in this case. So, I'm going to first take one side of the scale, throw my blade back on here, and we're gonna flip it over. And we'll see here, we're gonna go about a millimeter in, right around where those washers start. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull all this off, try not to lose any pieces. We're pulling these washers off as well. 
All right, so what we're seeing here is we have a little bit of room, maybe two or three millimeters that we need to uh, coat with the nail polish around the pivot and inside the pivot so that we don't get any of the acid etch happening on that area. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. All right, so the next step is going to be acid etching the blade. For this step, you're gonna need some rubbing alcohol, some nail polish remover, some gel nail polish, or really any kind of nail polish you can get. And of course your fair chloride. So right now what I'm doing, I'm just using some rubbing alcohol, getting everything off the blades, so the nail polish can stick. Making sure we got everything off, it's nice and clean. You really don't want anything on it for this step. If you have any smudges, fingerprints, or anything like that, um, you're gonna have trouble getting the nail polish and the ferric chloride to do a good job on the knife. All right, so now we know exactly where we need the nail polish to go. So I've shaken it up. And we're gonna go ahead and apply it on here. Get a nice generous coating. That way you don't have to worry about your pivot getting messed up at all. Make sure to get the lock interface. You could mess with the lock up. And the detent ball area as well as inside of the detent stopper. All right, and once I feel like I've gotten just enough of that on there, we're going to go ahead and wait for it to dry. Now, because I am specializing this knife a little bit for what I'm going to be doing, I'm also going to coat the area around that 90 degree face, just so that when I go to use the fire steel, I don't uh, mess up the coating too much. So we're gonna go ahead and just put a little bit of this right on the top here. Don't be afraid of getting it on your fingers, you're gonna to have to wipe it off in some areas. Now we wanna get a nice straight line. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to get a nice even coating on there. Right where I want it and not where I don't. Because keep in mind, any area you get this nail polish, you're not going to get any of that darkening. So you'll see here, I've got it a little bit on that Spyderco logo. I'm going to actually wipe that off. That way I don't have that problem. And then we're going to go ahead and do the blade as well. So for the sharpening edge, I'm just going to... This doesn't matter as much. This is going to kind of look cool, I think. You don't have to do this. I just think that this is going to look a little bit cool. Also stop me from having to resharpen it after I'm done with this. There we go. You could even draw a design if you really wanted to. I'm not that creative, so I'm not going to. I'm just going to evenly coat it, try to get a nice straight line. It's a little bit difficult. There we go. I'm going to flip it over and we'll try to do the same thing to the other side here. Bear with me if the camera's a little shaky or I'm moving out of the shot. I'm kind of a little bit focused on this. All right, so we're going to go ahead and set this down to dry nice and carefully. And we'll come back to that in a couple minutes. And once that's dried up, we're going to put another coating on, uh, wipe off any excess uh, nail polish, and then we'll go ahead and get it started in the acid etch. All right, guys, so we've got our nail polish all over the blade. It's all cleaned up exactly where I want. 
and I've cleaned up the blade so we don't have any gunk on it at all. So it's nice and clean. And we've definitely got that pivot nice and coated so we don't get anything messed up there. So I'm gonna go ahead and dunk this guy in the ferric chloride right now. And we are starting to go. We're gonna leave this in for 10 minutes, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and start that. And we're gonna make sure we got it completely submerged. All right, so I'll see you guys in 10 minutes. All right, now that we're at the 10 minute mark, we're gonna go ahead and take this out, dunk it in with some water just to neutralize that acid. Great. Let that sit in there for a minute. While we're waiting for that, I'm going to go ahead, set my timer up, and we're going to clean off the pocket clip. I'm also gonna do the pocket clip just for kicks and giggles. I think it'll look nice. So while we're waiting for that acid to get neutralized, take some more rubbing alcohol. I've already got the pocket clip um, tied onto a string. Clean all this up, get any smudges, fingerprints, any of that that you don't want on there off. There we go, let that dry for a second. All right, and we're gonna put that in for the same 10 minutes. All right, and while we're waiting for that pocket clip, we're gonna go ahead and pull this out and see how this turned out. We'll use paper towel. Now you'll notice a bunch of black stuff come off with it. That's perfectly normal, see? That's perfectly normal. And we're gonna go ahead and clean all this off. All right, and now that we wiped all that gunk off, we're gonna go ahead and take some nail polish remover. We'll take off all of this nail polish. It's being a little bit stubborn here. Now, like I said, I left that edge shiny. I thought it would look kind of cool. And I, it actually did look kind of cool. You don't have to do that. You could just dunk the whole thing in. You'll have to resharpen the knife, but that's not a huge deal. Get some more of that nail polish remover on here. Let me go ahead and get the rest of this off. The nail polish and the alcohol will not hurt that coating. Uh, so go ahead and wipe away. Just be careful, you don't wanna cut your glove like I just did. We'll get it off of everywhere we put it. It's gonna be a little bit stubborn, but that's okay. And one thing that I did to the pocket clip after I pulled it out, I sanded the area that it's gonna be rubbing against your pocket. That way it's a little bit smoother. It doesn't tear up your pocket. So now all that's left is to go ahead and reassemble the knife. So I'll switch to that view and we'll get all set up. All right, we're reassembling the knife here. This knife is a little bit of a pain to put back together and take apart, but not a big deal. Pocket clip first. Yeah. Say hi, Chris. What's up? What is your non knife person's opinion of this process? Looks cool complicated it's not too complicated <clears throat> we already did it to one of your knives yeah i know i was there <laughs> stop being such a sour puss this is your channel too does anybody else have any ideas of what we should do to the knives 
anybody done anything that you think looks cool, go ahead and leave it in the comments and uh, I'll give it a shot and we'll see how it turns out. What have we got going on here? How do you remember how you assembled it? Or how you took it apart? Well, how you took it apart isn't necessarily going to be the best way to put it back together. So then how do you know how to put it back together? Generally all knives are the same concept, as long as they have similar pieces. So... Like this knife is a little bit of a pain because it's got a free moving stop pin. So that always seems to come out of alignment when you're putting this knife back together. It's kind of like a puzzle. Yeah, kind of. Now we're going to go ahead and throw all of the other screws in place. All right, and just like that, we've got a customized knife. Everything still works perfectly fine. It's just all black. We got that finger choil and the spine is rounded. So you can do whatever you want to your knife. As long as you take some precautions, the knife will turn out just fine.